The following program is a presentation of the Southern Pine Council. It's third and a long seven, less than two minutes to play. The crowd's on their feet. Burt Jones drops back to pass. He's got a man downfield, and the ball's away. Playing football in the NFL was exciting. Hi, I'm Bird Jones. As a pro quarterback for 10 years, I had a lot of responsibility, both for myself and for the performance of my team. But today I'm doing some of the most important work I've ever done. I'm presently serving as a member of the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Commission, and I'm actively involved in a number of conservation groups. So today I want to talk to you about a different kind of responsibility, taking the responsibility for our forest and the environment. These forests are special, providing all kinds of useful products while contributing to the air we breathe. Using the forest wisely is important to our daily lives and to enhancing our environment. Trees like this are amazing. When harvested, virtually every bit of this tree will help make products vital to everyday life. Then, new trees will be planted to replace it. Every day, six million trees are planted throughout America assuring new forest and wood products for generations to come. Okay, so we agree. Wood is beautiful and valuable. Let me show you how this resource can last longer. This fallen tree is exposed to the elements, termites and rot. It has over time decayed and crumbled. That's nature's way. Wood products used outdoors will also decay without the proper protection. A coat of paint or stain might help a little, but the wood underneath is still vulnerable to the forces of nature. And here's what termites can do to unprotected wood. To protect wood used outdoors, there's a process called pressure treatment, during which a preservative is forced into the wood cells. Once a wood is protected, its fibers no longer serve as a food source for termites and other organisms. The logic is simple. Protect the wood, and you reduce the demands on our forests for replacing decayed wood. It's a proven fact. Structures built with pressure-treated wood last longer. Without pressure treatment, America would have to take more wood from our forests to replace deteriorating structures. How much wood every year? Enough to build a deck over 18,000 football fields. What a great way to extend our forest. Is treated wood a new idea? Not really. The process of treating wood with preservatives has been around for more than a hundred years. In 1875, the railroad industry started using cross ties and bridge timbers made with creosote treated wood. By 1936, a type of preservative called pentachlorophenol came along for protecting utility poles. Later, waterborne preservatives were introduced and are widely used for commonplace features around your home and school, for decks, fences, and at the neighborhood playground. All three kinds of preservatives are still used to protect wood from decay and termite attack. The process of treating the wood is fairly simple. This is a typical lumber treating plant. Bundles of lumber ride on a rail into a long cylinder. The door is sealed tightly. A liquid preservative fills the cylinder pumps create pressure which forces the preservative deep into the wood's fiber. After the process is completed, the treated wood is removed. Here's a product of our forest that's now equipped to weather the great outdoors. It's a renewable building material protected against decay and termite attack, and it's an important part of your everyday life, including the utility poles that bring you electricity, telephone service, and don't forget the cable TV right into your home. All three types of preservative treatments are suitable for these industrial uses. Waterborne preservatives are ideal for things built around your home or school, such as the deck in your backyard. This deck would not stand much of a chance against Mother Nature if the wood hadn't been pressure treated. With simple maintenance, this deck will provide many years of outdoor living space. But this is just one example. Treated wood is also used for fences, a kid's playground, bridges, roller coasters, walkways at the zoo, boat docks and marinas, birdhouses, and flower beds. Even a seat here on the 50-yard line. 
These stadium seats are made of pressure-treated lumber, and fans will be sitting on them for many seasons to come. Treated wood is all around us, offering the beauty of wood that's protected from decay and termites. And that's good news for our forest and the environment. Remember, it's our responsibility. Treated wood can help extend this valuable resource for generations to come. So let's win one for our forest. This has been a presentation of the Southern Pine Council.